Hello friends, welcome to another episode of BioNews. I have four papers to tell you guys about today, beginning with two papers about COVID-19. The first paper is by Tomasovic et al. This paper considers whether estrogen plays a protective role in the susceptibility to COVID-19, uh, the fatality of COVID-19, and the severity of symptoms from COVID-19. For those that don't know, women are more likely uh, to recover from COVID-19 and not die, and more, and more likely to not experience severe symptoms than men. Men are more likely to develop serious, severe symptoms and fatal outcomes. So this paper considers the role of estradiol in this protective element. You see guys, estradiol actually regulates the immune system. Men have different focuses of their immune system, from Th1 cells to Th2 cells, whereas women have the opposite. This is mainly governed, it seems, by steroidogenesis in women. However, this paper actually considers the direct non-genomic, meaning not by changing the gene uh, genetic uh, uh, transcription in the body, but the direct effect of estrogen in the body. So women have more estrogen than, uh, than men on average. So they wanted to know, is the estrogen doing something directly to the SARS-CoV-2 virus? It turns out the SARS-CoV-2 virus has a, a part of its uh, viral structure that is similar in molecular structure to the uh, estradiol, one of estradiol's two uh, receptors in our cells called the estradiol receptor beta. So estradiol receptor beta is molecularly similar to a point in the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Not only that, but this point in the SARS-CoV-2 virus seems to be conserved across the virus family called coronaviridae, whatever it's called. So it seems that women may be protecting themselves because estradiol may be potentially inactivating the virus or changing its behavior by attaching to it and binding to it. And in fact, to, uh, following along with this idea that estradiol may be protective, there's currently a, uh, a clinical trial at uh, Stony Brook, Brook University Hospital in New York giving 100 milligrams of estradiol in transdermal patches to men with COVID-19 for seven days in a row in an attempt to reduce the severity of their symptoms. Now, a second paper by uh, McCoy et al. looks at the subject from another perspective. They looked at men's susceptibility to COVID-19 from the perspective of men having higher androgens. You see, a previous paper showed that, that androgenic signaling increases the transcription of a, of a protein called transmembrane protease serine 2, also called TMPRSS2. TMPRSS2 is uh, used for host entry by the SARS-CoV-2 virus, meaning androgenic signaling increases the uh, uh, availability of this protein that SARS-CoV-2 is using to get in your uh, system. So that's one thing. Also, the authors of this McCoy et al. paper previously themselves were doing a, an observational, I think it was an observational study of 122 COVID-19 patient, male COVID-19 patients. They found that 79% of them had what's called androgenetic alopecia or andro, uh, uh, androgenic alopecia. It used to be called androgenic alopecia. They call it androgenetic alopecia now. It's AGA, it's somewhere of the AGA. So they found that 79% of the males had AGA which made them hypothesize that maybe androgen sensitivity makes people more susceptible to COVID-19. So in this observational study by McCoy et al, what they did was take 300 people, and these 300 people, they observed that the people, the, the, sorry, the 300 people with COVID-19 with androgenic alopecia, and the 300, uh, the, out of the 300 people, the, one take, the ones taking 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, including dutasteride and finasteride, were protected from uh, symptom severity of the disease, meaning they developed less severe symptoms of the disease. The authors hypothesized that this is because of the sensitivity, because they have less androgen signaling than the other people and in, in consequent to this observational study which was not an interventional study obviously the authors are doing a randomized controlled uh, trial on COVID-19 patients to see if dutasteride combined with or uh, maybe there may be true, true trials I'm not sure but dutasteride and proxala to uh, proxala uh, proxalutamide these things are crazy sometimes they invent interesting words proxalutamide is apparently a new antiandrogen so they're using dutasteride as well as this proxalutamide to see if they can reduce symptoms of COVID-19 in, in a future randomized controlled trial now our third paper by Edwards et al moves away from COVID-19 here we're discussing this susceptibility of men and women to seizures and it's an interesting thing Men are more susceptible to Parkinson's disease, they're more susceptible to uh, epilepsy than women, and the exact mechanism by which this is, occurs isn't completely known. In this study, uh, they, uh, the authors uh, hypothesize that uh, it is known, obviously, that neurons from males are more susceptible to hyperexcitability than neurons from females. Remember, guys, in your body, in your nervous system, you have excitatory activity, 
uh, by certain neurotransmitters and inhibitory activity. That inhibitory is tranquilizing activity and excitatory activity is sort of what you can think of when someone's manic. That's an extreme version of too much excitement. So what they've observed though, what they were uh, hypothesizing is that too much excitability over time can potentially rearrange the neuronal structure in the brain to make the brain have higher potential for uh, hyperexcitability in the future. So in this in vivo study on developing rodents, what the authors did was uh, apply what's called NMDA, which is N-methyl D-aspartate. NMDA is the actual chemical that the NMDA glutamate receptors are named after. Those are excitatory receptors that are known to cause neurotoxicity when overactivated. So here they used NMDA to produce seizures in male and female newborns. What they found is that the male newborn uh, rodents develop seizures more severely than the females. But this difference, the gender difference, could be uh, abolished by giving the males a non-selective serotonin receptor agonist. And as you guys will remember from my serotonin series, estradiol actually upregulates serotonin in the body. So it seems that maybe the protective element that estradiol is having on seizures is due to its effect on serotonin. Fascinating paper. Final paper by Pafundu et al. is also about overexcitability in the nervous system. Specifically, the authors start by identifying schizophrenia as a disease thought to have an etiology involving an imbalance between excitatory and inhibitory neuronal inputs. However, there's never been a rodent model of uh, schizophrenia in which the excitatory to inhibitory ratio has been directly assessed. So in this case, uh, Pafundo et al. developed a uh, such model. What they did was, in newborn rodents, they selectively ablated the NMDA receptors in the hippocampal and cortical interneurons. What this did in the, the development of the adolescent uh, rodents was cause uh, eventually excitatory to inhibitory ratios, dendritic retraction in the nervous system, and dendritic spine re relocalization in pyramidal gabergic neurons, which means that there's a neurotoxicity as well as a change in cognitive architecture consequent to having too much excitability caused in the rodents from a young age. How could this happen in normal people? Well, we know that uh, children, when they have trauma in childhood, end up with GABAergic deficiencies in childhood and adolescence. This deficiency will increase the excitatory to inhibitory ratio, maybe not in the exact same way as ablating NMDA receptors, but somewhat similarly. So you can imagine this being a realistic impact on the nervous system of developing traumatized children. And the interesting, the fascinating thing about this paper is that the excitatory to inhibitory uh, imbalances among the adolescent rodents was only shown during certain um, brain wave oscillations. So it was only shown specifically in theta and gamma oscillations, which are the highest frequency and second lowest frequency oscillations. Fascinating. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon with another episode of BioNews.